Escape to Bali with lush rice terraces, ancient temples, shopping, and a vibrant art scene. In this video, we'll dive into living in Ubud for a month for 1,275 US dollars. I'll show you my Airbnb and give you a tour of the neighborhood. We'll visit the monkey forest, rice terraces, art market, and temples. I'll give you recommendations for the top attractions, give you the cost, and share some off the beaten path gems. I'll share my favorite restaurants, sunset views, unique places, hikes, and rice field walks. And I'll give you the prices of tours, motorbike rentals, airport transfer, and more. Babud is an ideal home base for travelers seeking to explore the magnificent waterfalls scattered throughout the lush river-carved valleys and tropical rainforests near Bali's cultural heart. If the rice paddies in Ubud aren't enough for you, just 30 minutes north you can visit the Instagram famous rice terraces. The iconic rice terraces are one of Bali's most famous and photographed landscapes, with vibrant green paddy fields carved into the slopes and valleys. The cost can vary typically ranging from 10,000 at certain spots to 50,000 depending on where you enter the terraces. Some establishments include the entrance fee as part of the swing ticket price. So this is the main street in front of my Airbnb. There's a lot of restaurants all up and down this street and I'm going to try this one right here. I can see that it backs up against the rice paddy so I'll see how it is. These are what the restaurants look like here backing against the rice paddy. So the main street is just behind me right here and all these restaurants and many of the businesses back up against this rice paddy. So it's really relaxing. Why you this one the the duck the bebe tutupi sari uh, and this one with the urab with the rice and with the duck. You can uh, enjoy for the food. Thank you. I ordered the frozen mint leaf with lemon juice and traditional special smoked duck marinated in exotic herbs and spices and served with Balinese vegetables and it is delicious. So the total bill is 138,000. That's with tax. All along this main street there's plenty of bars and restaurants. There's another restaurant, restaurant and lots of boutiques. So we're right in the heart of Ubud with a lot of shopping. There's places all up and down here where you can get a massage and here the traditional Balinese massage for an hour is 80,000. So you can see many spas with really affordable prices. Weeks. What's your name? Iwan. Iwan. Yeah. You do uh, regular painting also or mostly mural? Uh, mostly mural. All right. uh, also painting but mostly mural. Mostly mural. My Instagram maybe you can yeah, tell find me, it. Tell me your Instagram. Mural Syndicate at Mural Syndicate on YouTube, Mural Syndicate too, okay. on TikTok. <laughs> All right, great, great. <laughs> Thank so you. Here he is, he just started. Yeah. I'll try to come back and get a shot and see what it looks like after he's finished. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> so that's one of the cool things around here is there's murals everywhere. A lot of artistic style everywhere you look. Little sculptures, backgrounds painted nicely, rock work. A lot of lush vegetation. The restaurants have very nice ambience. There's prices outside so you can see what things cost very easily. And a lot of traffic. Motorbike is definitely the best way to get around here because the traffic often is backed up like this and very, very slow. Here is the Laughing Buddha Bar, which is a very popular place for music. We've got music every night of the week. Every evening I've heard, it's been very good. And then my place is down this alley right next to it. As you walk down these side alleys, you can see they're very narrow. 
and the motorbikes have to come in and out. But there's lots of little Airbnbs all along back here. So lots of nice places to stay, lots of foliage. This is three floors up here. And here's another one. And my place is about a hundred yards off the main road, but it already gets very quiet back here and is right next to the rice paddy. So it's got wonderful views and it's quiet, yet it's right in the middle of town. Here is my room in Ubud. It's on the third floor in a residential neighborhood right in the main area and got a king size bed. And this is the main part of the room, the main room. There's my desk. So I've got a desk to work at. There's a nice wood carved chair here and a balcony area. I've got a little closed storage right there. There is a safe on this side. And then here is the bathroom with the toilet on this side and the shower here. These really nice wooden doors. I love the quality of the stuff here. Look at the ceiling. It's got a nice relief carved ceiling. These nice air vents above. I do have air conditioning in here. And then a nice area here. They're gonna bring me up some food right now. I ordered some food from the place here. I love the bamboo dividers, the vegetation. This is sheltered, so even in the rain, you could enjoy this outdoor space. And there's a common area over here. So if you've got a group, you can actually meet out here. This is just a common shared room. I'm here on my porch, the little deck outside my room. For breakfast and this is the breakfast that's included with staying here. Got a tomato omelet, toast, butter, and some fruit and it comes with tea or coffee. This is the shortcut road through the sacred monkey forest. The sacred monkey forest provides a unique opportunity to observe the mischievous gray long-tailed macaws in their natural habitat, roaming freely among the ancient temples and towering trees within this important spiritual conservation site. The adult entrance fee is 80,000 on weekends, that's about $5, and 100,000 on weekends, about $6.30. The traffic getting to Abud from the airport and in Abud is bad. If possible, I recommend traveling early in the morning or late in the evening. With a motorbike, it is easier to get through the traffic. For a motorbike rental, I would expect to pay 80,000 per day for a smaller CC bike or older bike and 100,000 or more per day for a larger CC or more expensive bike. That's about five or six dollars a day. You can also ask for weekly or monthly discounts. For motorbike taxis, Grab and Gojek are the best apps. It's exactly like Uber. Gas for my motorbike is 50,000 to fill the tank. $6 will buy enough gas to get most people through the month. For longer rides, or if you feel safer in a car, you can request a car instead of a scooter. Gojek and Grab will also deliver food. For taxis, Bluebird is my favorite company. They have an app called My Bluebird. For accommodations in Bali, my favorite apps or websites are Airbnb and Booking.com and Hostel World if you prefer to stay in hostels. Right now, I'm heading up to a restaurant to meet my friend Victoria. She's a classically trained opera and jazz singer. We met about eight years ago in Thailand, and she is even in some of my first videos on the channel. She now lives, teaches singing, and performs here in Abud.
where are we right now? Teruayan Coffee and Etchery. All right, and it's got a beautiful view here. We've got a beautiful view, and I'm with a young old friend. We've been friends for a long time, right? Yes. So we've been friends for a long time from Thailand. Now we're in, where are we at? In Bali. In Bali. And I already spent here more than a year, so I moved from Thailand, and yeah, I'm so happy to be here. I'm so grateful, so blessed in such a sacred land, especially with local people, because they know how to take care of each other, take care of nature, take care of their guests. So I feel like I loved in this space. And, uh, and what's it like living in this town? Yeah, so Bud is um, a beautiful community, and doesn't matter what you're looking for, you can always find it. But for me, I just found a um, Russian community at Park U. Uh, with the nice conditions for my activities, which is choir and as a singer, because I perform there with a jazz band sometimes, with a classical project. So they have a very nice concert halls, nice stage, um, nice equipment. And um, in Ubud, I feel like it's, it's kind of magical because whatever you will think about, the um, right uh, person with right intention gonna come to you and help you to make it happen. Okay, we got a couple of meals here. Victoria got the salmon, looks really nice. And I got the grilled smoked duck, which looks absolutely delicious. And our prices, I got the crispy duck, 138,000 and salmon teriyaki, 128,000. Well, one of the things I like about here that I can tell you already is that the food looks great uh -huh. and this is the atmosphere here. You get to look out at this beautiful rice paddy, oh. palm trees, and if we're lucky, we'll get a sunset right there mm -hmm. in about 30 minutes. After sunset, the restaurant had a cultural dance presentation. The artist is still working on the mural up here. We'll take a look at it and see how it's coming along. Okay, I'm gonna order the granola bowl for 55K and a latte for 35K. And tax and service are included. And it is good. The lush green landscape of Ubud is dotted with magnificent ancient Hindu temples and shrines, showcasing Bali's incredible religious architecture, ornately carved stone gateways, multi-tiered thatched roofs, and serene inner courtyards. In keeping with the Hindu Dharma belief of achieving harmony between the spiritual and physical worlds, Balinese homes commonly have a family temple or shrine located within the courtyard compound. Like first cleaning and then have holy water. These sacred spaces allow families to make daily offerings and hold religious ceremonies, honoring their ancestors and the divine Balinese Hindu spirits. The sacred Tirta Empel Temple, with its purifying holy spring water pools and intricately carved nagas, or mythical serpents, is a revered site for Hindu ritual bathing and ceremonies near Ubud. This is the Pura Goa Gaja Temple, and it costs 50000 to enter it. It's open 24 hours a day. And right now, I came just before sunset, and there's very few people here. This is inside the cave of the temple. There's the Hindu temple here and the Buddha temple. There's just so many temples to explore, 
and they're beautiful set in a lush jungle a lot of times there's water flowing by like down here I came here late in the day and I'm the only one here right now. I was invited to the new moon ceremony here at the temple by the owners of my Airbnb, so I'm gonna go check it out. Abud, known as the cultural heart of Bali, host many vibrant religious ceremonies and celebrations. Here is my friend that invited me today to the ceremony. Yeah, thank you. Well, thank you very much for inviting me and sharing the experience. Thank you. Visitors can witness the island's unique Hindu traditions as they come alive through colorful processions, intricate offerings, and ancient rituals. I'm right here at the Airbnb and this is the path that you ride down to the main street. All right, I'll try to give you an idea of what it's like riding down this. Hello. Thank you. All right, I'm getting ready to go to one of the local restaurants and this is one of my favorite places to eat. Authentic, great food at a really good price and I'll show you what it's like. In front, you can see the dishes they set up here as they finish cooking them. And they're in glass, protected. Hello, is it okay if I video for my YouTube channel? Yeah, it's okay. Okay, uh, I take the rundown and spicy. chicken spicy yeah the chicken yes yes please she's gonna dish me out some rice here so i get a scoop of rice and she's gonna give me some chili sauce some nice green chili and some vegetables what kind of vegetables pumpkin, pumpkin. all right and then she knows i like the leg you remember, right? <laughs> and can I get some of those sauce there too? Oh, so I'm gonna get a little bit of this sauce. I really like that. Curry? Yes, curry. Just a little curry on the rice. And a little bit of the chili sauce too. Chili sauce? Yeah. Red chili? Yeah, red chili. Perfect, that's good. <laughs> That's a lot. Okay, and how much is this? A two. Okay. Forty-two. Forty-three. Forty-three. Yeah. Okay, I thought it was forty-two or forty-three. I sit here. Yeah. Uh huh. Well, you're making potatoes for dinner tonight. Oh, okay. So here is the meal, and I've got the rice with the curry on it, the beef rangdang which is, I love this, it's so complex in the flavors. And then chili chicken with some pumpkin and some spicy chili. And this is what to go. You put the paper for to go, for takeaway? Yes. Yeah. That is what the takeaway looks like. <laughs> the beef rindang is absolutely delicious. It's one of my favorite dishes in the world. And um, the sauce has the coconut cream, lemongrass, um, coriander, turmeric, cloves, lime leaves, a lot of just complex flavors. So absolutely delicious. And then the red chicken chili, of course has red chili on it, a different type of spice, 
then the cooked green chilies and spices are just a whole nother flavor that adds to this meal. And then pumpkin, which is cooked, um, tastes almost a little bit like potatoes the way they the way they prepare it. So just a fabulous meal for a very good price. So this is a kite shop here and the father and brother here make these kites and they have some that are airbrushed and some that are hand painted. You can actually see the paintbrush strokes on some of these and they're all handmade. So you can see the sticks and the threads all twisted together. Look at that craftsmanship. So I bought the red dragon kite. I'm right next to the museum and next to this museum is a hike. You have to look for this sign and this little passageway and this is where we're going to go for the hike right now. You can see the river down here. I'm about 100 meters back right now and it's already getting quiet. I can't hear the road noise anymore and the vegetation is really lush and green. Along the trail you'll pass this house. This is the Artist Santa and you can see some of his sculptures. It's a nice unique place with a lot of things to look at, but it is a private residence. So now it's open, uh, seven to six o'clock. Oh, okay, seven to six o'clock. So they even use the, I have a mini gym, and uh, things like that happen often. Oh, okay, I'll go look upstairs. All right, this is upstairs at Santa's place. He's got this weight. This is kind of a good little place to work out. and definitely a creative space. Yeah, I manifested five years ago. Uh, yeah, about five years ago, unconscious manifested because I was thinking, why is no one doing anything here? So I became the guy, so be careful what you think for. Uh-huh. That was Santa's place, and now we'll continue on the walk. Another nice walk here in town is the Sari Organic Walk. You can find it on Google Maps. There are many nice restaurants, cafes, art shops along the trail. The path gradually narrows as it ascends the ridge. Just past Sunset Cafe, there's a small trail that leads to a bridge. It's on Google Maps as Bridge Accessing Ricefield Path. Cross the bridge and follow the adventurous narrow path and you'll eventually emerge at the northern end of this trail. It makes a great loop. Jim? Yeah, this is Rustu and he's got a little, a little shop right here on the hike. So if you want to come get, oh those bulls are nice, the coconut bulls I like. Oh and you have coconuts, 20,000. Very nice, it's a beautiful place to live. So if you're looking for a coconut, this would be a good place to stop and get a cold drink. Thank you, Rustu. As you do this hike, you'll pass people's houses like that. So uh, it's kind of interesting because you can see it's this nice little walkway, but it's really just a public road also. And people live all along here. This looks like a rental Airbnb. One of the most charming aspects of Bali is the warm, welcoming nature of the Balinese people who greet visitors with big smiles and a sincere Om Swastiestu. Water is life for the rice fields here. And you can see how the water coming down, everything has been built around this. The water irrigates all the rice fields and everything that's being grown. There are several places to eat along the way up here at the top of the walk. The road begins again on up this way. 
This is 8T, 8T, tea and coffee shop. And it's a little after 8 a.m. And this is the view you get. And here is sweet orange warung. We will stop here and get something to eat or drink. It's a nice restaurant. I ordered the smoothie bowl and it is 45,000. And this is the view that you get while you eat. If you would like to do this hike, you can look on Google Maps under Sweet Orange Walk Trail. Sweet Orange Warung, that's something you can mark as the end of the walk part of this outing. The Kampuhan Ridge Trail is more of a hike. It's best experienced in the early morning or late afternoon for sunset. The nine kilometer trail is fairly easy, but it does have inclines as it climbs up the ridge to the beautiful views over the lush valley. There's a lot of great places to eat here at night. And right now I'm gonna get dinner at a really nice place, mid-range restaurant, and get one of my favorite dishes. I got the I Am Rika Rika, which is a spicy chicken dish. My dinner with a beer, including tax and tip, was 120,000, about $7.60. A motorbike is definitely the easiest way to get around town. If you're staying in the downtown area, there's many places you can walk to. I'll give you a tour of the neighborhood right now. The streets and markets of Abud offer a variety of handcrafts, artisan goods, batik fabrics, and unique souvenirs for shoppers looking to find one-of-a-kind items. From intricately carved wood sculptures, to vibrant paintings, and beautiful woven baskets, metalwork, and textiles, the handcrafted items showcase the incredible talent and cultural heritage of Bali's skilled artisans. I'll try to say the name of this street, it's Karna. Tell me the pronunciation, Karna? Karna. 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 Yeah, thank you. So it's a good street for shopping. Lots of nice little boutiques and then the stalls here. And there's a coffee shop I'm coming to here that I read about online. And oh, here, I can see here's the people right here. Where, where's the coffee? Uh, inside. Inside? Yeah. All right, so, and you have the civet, the luwak? Yeah. Or she can hold it like that. Yeah, so you can actually come in and hold the pet Luwak civets and find out about the special coffee. They make coffee in a very special way. So you can come here and learn about it. And here's the beautiful patchwork um, Bali shirts and pants. And um, I actually have several of these. I'll probably get another one this trip. And uh, let's look back here. So this is very typical of what you'll find here. A lot of times little coffee shops and restaurants are set back off the main streets and you'll find these beautiful courtyards with Airbnbs. Okay, yeah. Oh, I, I stayed here before. <laughs> I, I stayed up there one time. Oh, look right here. Sleeping. Don't want to wake up. Yeah. They ordered a coffee here and a hot latte is 35,000 and 
you can play with the animals here, the civets, when they're awake. I won't bother them right now because they're sleeping. Here's the courtyard of the coffee shop. And one of the things I love about Bali and one of the things I love about Ubud in particular is that the aesthetics and the appreciation for the arts is apparent everywhere you go. If you just look at this little coffee shop, you can see the stone relief sculpture on the wall and the attention to the detail, even in the rooftop ceiling and even in the tile work and even some of the nice old furniture this is not expensive it's just practical but it's beautiful wood and the gardens let's take a look at this garden here and the air plants on this wall And this is not unusual, this is very typical. You'll see this on these little courtyards off the main road all over. Okay, Novi, can you tell me about the luwak coffee? Yes, the luwak is a cherry coffee and they process inside and they poop the coffee. So we call coffee luwak. Coffee luwak. Yes. So, and we call civet. So yes. Lu, this is luwak. Yes, in luwak civet. Yep. Yeah, and so the coffee is processed when they eat it and it yes. goes through their system and yes. gives it a special flavor. Yes, that's right. Very nice. And then the Lua coffee is more low caffeine than the normal coffee. Go Thank on. you very much. Thank you. If you're staying in town, you'll find a lot of places where you can get organized tours or transportation to the airport. They'll set it up where they pick you up at your hotel or Airbnb. There's also plenty of money exchanges, so plenty of places also to rent motorbikes. So you can pretty much find everything you need within walking distance if you stay in town. Okay, I just stopped at one of the booths here, and right here you can book tours. You can set up travel arrangements to another town and they've got the rates for currency exchange. So I decided to change some dollars. So you have to be careful when you get dollars in the US. They don't want to take this bill because it's got a cut right there. So I probably can't exchange this one. In the United States, you wouldn't think anything of it. A tour that visits four waterfalls will cost about 200,000 per person about $12.60. You can also find tours of the temples, volcano views, and combination tours. A private car and driver will cost you around $500,000 for the waterfall tour, about $32 US dollars. That can be a great deal if you split the cost between a few people. So here's another spa that I see as I'm walking by and it is very typical of what you'll find here. Prices, full body massage starts at 100,000 and they've got all sorts of options, including hair treatment, waxing, beauty treatments, and this is the courtyard of the facility. We'll continue to look around down this street. I like this bar. Here's the Ubud Art Market. There's several buildings here. And if you're looking for one place to go and get many different artistic items, this is the place. You can see it's filled with different booths and vendors selling everything. And there's multiple floors. So it's a very large place with a very big selection. I just stopped by on the road as I was passing this art gallery and it caught my eye. So I came in and checked it out and I met the owner, Ike. And here is Ike. Hello, I am Ike, the <laughs> owner of Ike's Gallery from in, Bali. 
And you have painting classes? Right, I for, have painting classes. For how many years? Uh, I started doing painting classes already 24 years. 24 yeah, years? From 2000 until now. Very nice. Yeah. And I, I noticed your bonsai trees. Thank and you. how old are they? Oh, about my bonsai that is same age with my son. So around 33 years old. When he is born, I am also start plant the seed from that bonsai and then now it's same age with him already. So your bonsai trees are 33 years old. Right. Very cool. Yeah. This is a great place if you're looking for a place to take a painting class while you're in Bali or if you want to commission a painting or if you want to just stop by and see the cool bonsai trees, come to Ike's Gallery here. Right. And your grandson. This is my grandson. Uh -huh. Yay. Yeah, I hope he like also with painting. Very good. Yeah. <laughs> okay, thank you. Are you welcome? Can you tell me the name of your restaurant here? The name of the restaurant is Sinduk Warung. Uh huh. Yeah, in Bali, uh, spoon is called Sinduk. Okay, Sinduk. Yeah, Sinduk. So it's the spoon restaurant, and it's got a little air conditioned space and a nice space outside. Yeah. I ordered the lemongrass, lime, and mint juice drink, and the drinks are 20,000. And I got a smoothie bowl. This is the tropical smoothie bowl, and this is 39,000. And the chicken saute, 33,000. So total 92,000 for a nice meal. Carved by ancient lava flows and raging rivers, Bali's dramatic volcanic canyons and deep ravines act as natural dividers, separating the iconic terraced rice fields. Some canyons are too steep and waterways too treacherous to cross for miles, adding to the island's geographic character. Winding narrow roads and paths traverse the ridgelines between these volcanic canyons, meandering for miles and offering endless opportunities to explore. From discovering charming rural villages and trying out local warungs to visiting the studios of skilled artisans crafting their intricate artwork. Here are a few recommended places to stop along the way on the organic walk. Despite the influx of tourism, the locals maintain a strong sense of community and pride in their unique Hindu culture. Happy to share it through dance, music, art, and everyday interactions. The friendliness extends even to the smallest villages, where residents may invite you in for a coffee or a glimpse into their family compound, exemplifying the island's philosophy of Trahita Karana, living in harmony with the spiritual, human, and natural realms. There are some really unique villas along this path that you can stay at. You can arrange to have your luggage brought up on the back of a motorbike so people will stop at the bottom of this road and then the bike taxis will bring them up and you can stay in one of these nice villas and there's lots of little paths that come off of the main road that go down to other unique places to stay and places to eat. This is Monkey Bar. It's a nice place to stop at the bottom of the walk. And the sunset goes down right here. This is Dragonfly Cafe and Gelato. It's a very chill cafe. They also have bungalows and a retreat center. Here is the Organic Farmer Restaurant Cafe.
at Organic Farmer, the vegetables and fruit comes from their own garden or directly from the local market, and the eggs from the chickens that run freely through the garden. Sunset is a good place to get a meal and they have a nice view of the rice field. For dinner, I decided to head up to Cafe Pomegranate for sunset. I ordered a large Bintang beer for 50,000 and a delicious nine spice Indian curry chicken for 67,000. So my total dinner cost is 117,000. That's about $7.40 for a great meal in a relaxing, beautiful location. Here are basic mid-range costs for the month. My Airbnb is $140 per week, including breakfast. That's $560 for the month. My lunch and dinners were around $340. Half were simple but delicious meals at local Warungs, and half were at nicer restaurants, and my meals included a fruit drink, fresh coconut, or a beer. Additionally, I enjoyed a cappuccino or latte every day, about $65. For transportation, I would plan on $150 for a monthly motorbike rental, or taxi and grab rides around Ubud. Transfer to and from the airport can be as little as $6 for a shared bus or van, or around $25 for a taxi or private driver. Make sure to subscribe for future money-saving tips. Laundry for me is $15 per month, picked up and dropped off to my room. Additional activities will vary, but $100 will get you a month of yoga classes or it can be used to cover your cost for day passes at resorts, Balinese dance shows, or entrance fees for museums, temples, and waterfalls. My actual costs are lower than this since I have my own transportation and usually act as my own guide. For most people, a visa on arrival will cost about $35 US dollars. My actual visa cost was $45 for a month since I opted for the online 60-day tourist visa. This can easily be extended and allowed me to skip the long lines at immigration. My actual cost were $1,275, and this is a budget based on convenience, an in-town location, and daily rates. This budget could easily drop under $1,000 for someone that is budget conscious living outside of the town center, getting monthly discounts, or by sharing some of the room or travel expenses with another person. Like, like subscribe, and, and click, click the bell. bell. Yeah. <laughs> Please take time to share this video or to leave a comment. This helps support this channel so that I can keep bringing you free videos. Subscribe and click the notification bell so that you will know when I post cost of living guides or lifestyle profiles here on Living Overseas TV.